Genesis chapter 19 verses 24 to 25 mention that, Then Yahweh rained on Sodom and on Gomorrah sulfur and fire from Yahweh out of the sky. He overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew on the ground. Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 18 adds that, As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and its neighbor cities, says Yahweh, no man will dwell there, neither will any son of man live therein. Luke chapter 17 verse 29 also tells us that. But in the day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and sulfur from the sky and destroyed them all. So God destroyed everything in Sodom, Gomorrah and the neighboring cities, except for Lot and his family, who managed to escape just before the catastrophe struck. Before we go into the reasons why God destroyed these cities, here is a brief background about them. Where were Sodom, Gomorrah and the neighboring cities located? Genesis chapter 13 verses 10 to 11 mention that. Lot lifted up his eyes and saw all the plain of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before Yahweh destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of Yahweh, like the land of Egypt, as you go to Zoar. So Lot chose the plain of the Jordan for himself. Lot traveled east, and they separated themselves from one another. Thus Sodom, Gomorrah and the neighboring cities were located on the well-watered plain of the Jordan, at the east side of Canaan. These are the possible locations of Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, and Zoar where burnt sulfur or brimstone were also found who lived in Sodom, Gomorrah and the neighboring cities. Genesis chapter 10 verse 19 mentions that. The border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as you go toward Gerar, to Gaza, as you go toward Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim, to Lasha. The Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim are cities of Canaanites, descendants of Canaan. Canaan was the son of Ham, who was the son of Noah. Genesis chapter 9 verses 20 to 25 tell us that. Noah began to be a farmer, and planted a vineyard. He drank of the wine and got drunk. He was uncovered within his tent. Ham the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brothers outside. Shem and Japheth took a garment, and laid it on both their shoulders, went in backwards, and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were backwards, and they didn't see their father's nakedness. Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his youngest son had done to him. He said, Canaan is cursed. He will be a servant of servants to his brothers. Though Canaan and his descendants were cursed, this was not the reason that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Why then did God destroy Sodom, Gomorrah and the neighboring cities? Here are six reasons why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. These reasons are not in any particular order though they are numbered, but together contributed to the destruction of these cities. Reason number one. The people in Sodom, Gomorrah and the neighboring cities gave themselves over to sin. Jude verse 7 tells us that. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, having in the same ways these given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are shown as an example, suffering the punishment of eternal fire. Genesis chapter 19 verse 5 testifies that. They called to Lot, and said to him, Where are the men who came into you this night? Bring them out to us, that we may have sex with them. Besides sexual immorality and perversion, there were also other sins. Ezekiel chapter 16 verses 49 to 50 tell us that. Behold this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom, pride, fullness of bread, and prosperous ease was in her and in her daughters. She also didn't strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. They were arrogant, and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away when I saw it. Genesis chapter 13 verse 13 sums up. Now the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinners against Yahweh. 
Thus, reason number one, they gave themselves over to sin. Reason number two, the people in Sodom paraded their sin publicly. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 9 says, The look of their faces testify against them. They parade their sin like Sodom. They don't hide it. Woe to their soul, for they have brought disaster upon themselves. Genesis chapter 19 verses 4 to 5 testify that. But before they lay down the men of the city, the men of Sodom surrounded the house, both young and old, all the people from every quarter. They called to Lot, and said to him, Where are the men who came into you this night? Bring them out to us, that we may have sex with them. Yes, reason number two, they paraded, promoted, and displayed their sin publicly and without hiding it. Reason number three, the people in Sodom and Gomorrah strengthen the hands of evildoers that they may continue in their wickedness. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 14 says, In the prophets of Jerusalem I have also seen a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers, so that no one returns from his wickedness. They have all become to me as Sodom, and its inhabitants as Gomorrah. In Genesis chapter 19 verse 9, Lot pleaded with the Sodomites but they said stand back, and they said this one fellow came in to live as a foreigner, and he appoints himself a judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. They pressed hard on the man Lot and came near to break the door. Romans chapter 1 verse 18 reminds us that for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. The people in Sodom and Gomorrah strengthen the hands of evildoers, giving evildoers authorities, appointing them as judges and lawmakers to suppress what is righteous, so that they did not have to turn from their wickedness. Reason number four. There were less than 10 righteous people in the whole city of Sodom. In Genesis chapter 18, Abraham pleaded with the Lord not to destroy the righteous. Verse 32 tells us that, he said, Oh, don't let the Lord be angry, and I will speak just once more. What if 10 are found there? He said, I will not destroy it for the ten's sake. In fact, only Lot and his two daughters were saved from the destruction. Lot's wife became a pillar of salt because she looked back. Thus, reason number four, there were less than 10 righteous people in these cities. Reason number five, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah and their grievous sin was bad and great. Genesis chapter 18 verses 20 to 21 tell us that, Yahweh said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now, and see whether their deeds are as bad as the reports which have come to me. If not, I will know. Reason number 6. Sodom and Gomorrah serve as an example of what is to come during end times. Luke chapter 17 verses 29 to 30 mention that, but in the day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and sulfur from the sky and destroyed them all. It will be the same way in the day that the Son of Man is revealed. 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 6 to 7 also tell us that. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, having made them an example to those who would live in an ungodly way, and delivered righteous Lot, who was very distressed by the lustful life of the wicked, Ephesians chapter 5 verses 5 to 7 warn us that. Know this for sure, that no sexually immoral person nor unclean person or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. Therefore don't be partakers with them. So reason number six, they serve as an example of what is to come during end times. 
Yes, these are the six reasons why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 8 to 10 offer us a hope against similar wrath. But since we belong to the day, let's be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God didn't appoint us to wrath, but to the obtaining of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Let us know your comments and do like, subscribe and share. Thank you for watching and we shall see you in the next video. God bless.